Hi, and welcome to this walkthrough video of Veiled Ashes. Veiled Ashes is the newest sample library for Contact 6 from Observant Sound. It is a dual sample player with a focus on modulation, inspired by the world of synthesizers that mostly allow you to modulate any parameter in any way you want. My name is Max Christensen from Observant Sound, and I'm really excited to finally be able to show the world what this thing can do. Let's go through the UI and talk about all the features that this library offers. When you load up the library for the first time, you are presented with what I call the main page. Here you can make adjustments to both sample layers. You can quick select a preset or quick select a sample. With the AB buttons, you can set which side is currently active for editing. You can bypass the FX and the modulators for either the A or the B side. You can turn FX on and off for the current editing side and adjust parameters. You can show or hide the modulators or the master section. You can set the play mode to be in unison. So any key will trigger both sample layers, or you can turn on split mode where the red colored keys will only play the left sample and the yellow colored keys will only play the right sample. With the text box next to it, you can set the split point on the keyboard. The only thing left are the buttons here on the top left, but we'll get to these in a little bit. Let me walk you through the different adjustments that you can make to the sample. We have the typical parameters like volume, pan, pitch, a dedicated envelope for volume, reverb and delay sense, a stereo slider which goes between mono full stereo of the recording and extended stereo. This widening effect comes before the sense. So even if this sample is set to mono, if the delay or the reverb wants to spread the signal, it still can. And lastly, we have a position slider and a random position slider. With these, you can set the starting position of any sample. Working with random sample starting points can be especially fun when working with samples that are not so pad-like and have a bit more performance in them. And this can be especially fun when adding some reverb and delay. At the top, we have a bypass button.
quick select buttons for the sample. A octave offset. And a button which lets you immediately go to sample assignment, which we'll talk about next. One last note about the octave offset, you will notice the the key coloring is changing a bit. Any key that is painted black will not result in any keys because at that point the sample is just too low. The same goes for the right side. So let's talk about the browser next. I've already opened it and if you've seen me use it, let's talk about it from scratch. You can access the layer browser or the preset browser in various ways. You either click on a sample name and it will immediately take you to the layer browser of the correct side. You see A is turned on right now, but if I click on the right one, then it will switch to B which means right now I'm assigning a sample for the B side. Now I'm assigning a sample for the A side. In this column, we have our sample categories and here we have our sample entries. We have ambient, various bowed, various instruments, winds, violins, synths, metallic, atonal, and our user samples. And we can browse through the categories by using these up and down bottom, up and down, buttons at the bottom. On the right side, I can click and assign any sample and it will assign it to the sample player. Here I can also quick select samples by using these left right buttons. Or if I'm not sure what I'm looking for, and I just want to experiment a bit, I can choose a random sample. Let's assign a sample for the B side. If you switch between the A and the B side while the browser is open, it will always show you which sample is currently assigned and from which category. Sometimes a category will have more samples that can be displayed. In that case, you will see this says page one of two. And if we want to see the rest, then we can cycle through the entries with these buttons. The amount of samples will change depending on the category. Next to the layers button is the preset button, which opens up the same browser, but for presets. In this case, we have our preset categories on the left and our preset entries on the right. You'll see these ones are a bit indented, which means these are subcategories. If global is selected, then this list will display all 200 presets. But if we're looking for something specific and we don't want to click so much, then we can also choose one of these subcategories, which have less entries and are easier to manage. If we click on global again, we can collapse this view and beneath this, we will see the user preset tabs. Currently they are all empty, but once you start saving your own presets, they will appear here, which I will show you in a little bit. Same as with the layer browser, we have a random button if we're looking for inspiration. And we can also quick select through the presets. <laughs> mm. 
if I assign a preset from, let's say, the drones paths subcategory, and I exit the browser view, then you will see this quick select menu has changed to reflect that we are currently in the drones paths subcategory. And by using these quick select buttons, I am browsing through those entries. Next, we'll talk about the matrix and the modulators, which is the core of this instrument. Now, the modulators are hidden by default if you just want to use presets and don't want to make a lot of adjustments. But to show them, we will click on the mods in the upper right and they will appear. For both A and B side, we have four LFOs, one key follow, one velocity, and three envelopes. And what you see here also reflects the current side that we're working with. So for each LFO, we have a synced state, a unsynced state in Hertz, We can set the LFO to re-trigger with every note or to just go through. We can set the LFO waveform, the speed, a fade in time, its phase, and an amount slider, which will affect all targets that this modulator is currently targeting. This will make more sense in a second. The key follow and velocity do not have any controls, rather they are just a bypass button and they have their amount sliders. And the envelope does, as you would expect, have its four controls, namely the attack time, decay time, sustain value, and release time, along with an amount slider and bypass buttons. Let me reset this again before going to the matrix, which is the button on the top left right here. Now it's called matrix because it's a modulation matrix. And this is pretty much the core of the instrument. This is where the idea came from and everything has been built around it. The idea is that with my nine modulators, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine per side, I can completely and freely decide what should be modulated and by how much. Let me just demonstrate this for a second. So as you can hopefully tell, there's a lot of potential in this system because every sample that you use can be turned into so much more. Now, if you want to clear any matrix assignment, you can use this bottom on the lower left of the matrix and it will reset any modulation amount to zero. 
many of the presets explore this kind of modulation as well. Let's talk about these four buttons here at the top. First off are my redo and undo buttons, which do exactly what you think they'll do. They will keep an edit history for up to 30 steps. Next to it, we have our random menu button. Here, you can choose to either randomize the layers, the modulators, the matrix, the effects, or pretty much everything. Also, you can choose which side you'd like to affect. For layers, it will choose a random sample, but leave the sample parameters intact. The modulator button will randomize the modulators, but leave the matrix intact. The matrix button will only randomize the matrix and leave the modulators intact. To be noted is that the random button will only affect the modulators which are actually turned on. You can randomize effects. Or you can choose to just randomize everything and see what happens. As you can hear, this can lead to some pretty crazy results. And it's really fun to use because it constantly keeps surprising you. Even me, the creator of this instrument, who has worked on it for close to three years, I press a button and I'm like, oh wow, it can do that. <laughs> so yeah, it's really fun. Next to the random menu, we have a pretty simple utility, which is just a switch side. Maybe for some reason you would want a specific sound to be on the left and another one to be on the right, but while developing it, they were the other way around. So with this, it's really easy to just switch sides. One button that I forgot to mention was the master section. Let's just have a quick look at what that does. So in the master section, you have a filter, a master with control, a volume as an expression, limiter, and some pre-made CC controls. The filter cutoff is hard mapped to CC controller 1, and the expression is mapped to CC controller 11. This will be very familiar to a lot of composers out there. We have a master with control. 
which basically just adds some stereo widening to the master signal and a limiter for either getting crunched sounds or to balance out some dynamic inconsistencies in either modulation or sample. Next to the master, we have a pre-made CC menu. You have four slots for controlling left side controls and four slots for controlling right side controls. These are mapped to controller 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27. I thought having this kind of menu would be a little easier than always having to right click learn. If for example, you find that for a lot of patches, you always want to be able to control the speed, the filter cutoff and the, and the distortion, then you can set this once, you can save this as your init template and it will always have this set and be ready to go. Now, one last thing to talk about are the user assets. So Veiled Ashes supports drag and drop user samples and it supports saving your own user presets. Let me show you how to do that. Now to the right of this window, I have a folder open with some WAF files. And if I just click and drag one of them and drop them to the waveform display, then that is how you import your user samples. You will notice a new kind of symbol opened up or appeared. That is the loop setting. If for some reason you wanted this to be a one shot and not a loop, then you can easily set this. Or you can have it be a loop. If we look at the sample browser again, then you will see the first slot of the user samples has now been filled and occupied, and it is available for both sides. For saving user presets, we have to go to the last window, which we haven't seen yet. So let's make some random settings by randomizing everything. Now we need to go to either the preset or the layer browser, doesn't really matter. And then we click this gear icon in the top left here. This will take you to your user assets window. On the right, we have various clear buttons. If you decide to want to start from scratch or you made some temporary saves, but you don't want to keep them in your list, then you can easily clear everything. And also you can clear the samples and free up the slots. If I do this, I accept yes. Then you will see the sample is now unassigned. For presets, I want to save a global preset. I, sit, I click save. I enter my name. And I click save. And now it will appear as my first user preset. Additionally to that, you can also choose to only save the modulation part of a patch or the FX part of a patch. And you do that by clicking save modulation or save FX. Now they appear in the appropriate slot and you will see if I activate this preset, then only the modulators will change and not the effects and not the layers. Additionally, there's this MM button here, which stands for modulation matrix. This is another segmentation 
because you can you could choose to only apply the settings for the modulators but not the settings for the matrix and you do this by activating or deactivating this button if this is turned off then the preset will only apply to the modulators if this is turned on and you apply the preset then the modulation matrix will also apply the preset And lastly, for the DFX, works the same way, minus the modulation matrix. But you can choose to only have the FX be applied from a preset. The reason for doing this is because I felt for the people who like to dig deep and to make their own patches and their own sounds, it can be helpful to work in this modular way and also maybe finding new sounds by applying global preset one, but modulation preset two, NFX preset three, and then seeing what happens. All right, that's it for this walkthrough video. If you're already a Veiled Ashes user, then I hope this video was helpful to you and that you have fun experimenting. If not, you can go to my website and download a free light version of this instrument. It has some restricted features and a smaller sample and preset pool, but it should still be a lot of fun to play with and for you to find out if this is something that could be useful to you. So head on over to observantsound.com to find out more.